representing FoxSports.com and, of course, CuseNation.com. He's Dan Tortora, and I'm John Garcia, Jr. Uh, Dan, I live down here now, but I think you brought the Syracuse weather with you. Well, apparently, you know, out in Washington, I think I got, you know, a little bit spoiled. But coming down here and finding out it was going to be around, like, 40-something degrees, yeah. raining, this is this is Syracuse weather. I mean, you know what you can say about the players is I think they'll definitely feel at home with weather like this. Yeah, home, dome, cold, gray. You get the picture. It's normal. Anyway, we're going to talk about Syracuse's road to that building right there, the Georgia Dome. The Final Four, as you all know, a, a magical ride for Jim Beheim uh, and crew, despite adversity, despite everything. So let's start really from the Big East Tournament when I think we can all agree the light turned on. Right, yeah, the Big East Tournament really was their second birth. It was another opportunity for them. I mean, you lose four out of five, and you, know, you lose to teams like Louisville, Marquette, Georgetown, all the top three teams in the Big East. So what you're really saying to yourself is you know, that you don't deserve to be there. You played your way out of first spot, second, third, all the way down to fifth, got some help from Notre Dame. And you know, I, I mean, looking at what they did in the Big East Tournament, I mean, Seton Hall was a good game to get over the hump. Pittsburgh was a game to get revenge. And then that Georgetown game, to to me at least, really turn this corner for Syracuse. Once they beat Georgetown, it was a different world. And then going forward, of course, uh, you get the four seed in the tournament, uh, the NCAA tournament. You get Montana. Some people actually predicted, I'm not going to name any names or any <laughs> networks, predicted Montana to upset Syracuse. And, of course, what the Orange do is, is put up, a, I believe, a 46-point win and the biggest win of the tournament uh, overall to this point and, and probably will hold up with, with a few games left. Talk about what that game did for Syracuse and, and what it did mentally and physically because so many people saw the floor and, and the confidence went from, okay, I think we're back to, okay, we're definitely back. Yeah, I mean, I, I think in the Montana game, you know, this is a Syracuse team that this is what you see them do at the beginning of the season. You know, they beat up on teams, they're scoring 70 points, 100 points 90 points they haven't done it in a while and to go up against Montana you know this is a team that in the Big East tournament they found their way back they got three wins they held with Louisville for at least you know let's say maybe 25 to 30 minutes out of, out of the 40 minutes played so when you look at that game and you go into Montana Montana is, is not a team that's going to be ready to play a team like Syracuse yeah people are going to make their picks and every year you got to go with somebody crazy and you know when you're in the NCAA tournament but you know the bold pick didn't work out and I think it was it was a huge confidence booster because this team is not always you know it's it's not a typical thing for Syracuse to beat up on anybody sometimes they play down to the level of the team that they're playing so to go up against Montana and go out there, C.J. Fair, from the first moment to go inside and score. They really established the fact, you're not going to guard us, you're not going to be able to play against us, and they made that statement from the three-point line, the free-throw line, inside, wherever they were, and you know, I think it's, it's a comfort feel, because once you start winning, you start scoring, you start racking up the points, you start to feel more comfortable, and I think in Syracuse's case, they needed one of those games to say, hey, you know what, we do have some talent on this team. So they certainly got off to a hot start and stayed hot through about that Montana game, similar the Cal game in the second round or the third round, I guess we should say, of the tournament. Another hot start, you jump out to a nice lead and, and struggle a little bit late, but, but again, you hold on and advance to the Sweet 16. Yeah, you know, th this was a game where Syracuse really had to hit free throws. I mean, that's what it came down to in the second half. Both teams really weren't getting the job done, and, you know, Syracuse, you know, should have made some more. I mean, if this was a national championship game, it would have been a different story, but 11 of 18 in this one run, you know, couldn't really get anything going, and then they start getting some shots inside. They did just enough to hold Cal off, but it was really the first half of establishing the fact that Cal wasn't going to be able to beat the zone and, you know, making enough shots. So this was one of those games that was a telltale of if you do well in the first 20 minutes, you could find your way through the next 20 minutes. And, you know, it was a team that from the charity stripe, like I said, should have probably made more shots, but did enough to move on. And, and you know, I mean, you have to look at Syracuse and what Jim Beheim said. They were the better seed, but they were playing a road game in California against California. Right. Speaking of the zone, I know much has been made uh, really all year, really throughout Bayheim's career as the coach at SU, but against Indiana in the Sweet 16, <laughs> against the one seed in the region, the yep. one game where people said, you know what? Most people said that Syracuse's run, if they made it this far, would probably end here, and the zone kind of struts its stuff uh, for 40 minutes. 
Yeah, and you know, this this zone going up against an Indiana team that spent nine weeks as the number one team in the country, more than any other team by far. You know, going up against Indiana in the first part of the game, first few possessions, you saw as soon as they got the ball, they were flustered, confused, didn't know where to go with it. Defense right up in their face. Michael Carter Williams, Brandon Trish doing a good job. Trevor Cooney getting a steal. And, you know, inside, just really learning how to collapse between Baikita and Rakeem Christmas on a guy like Cody Zeller, which really says a lot because this is a guy who has footwork at seven feet. He's got a shot at seven feet. He can make free throws at seven feet. This isn't your Shaquille O'Neal seven-footer. So, you know, I, I think for Syracuse, they really just went out there and played their lockdown defense better than I think they've played it all season long up to that point in that game against Indiana and really showed that, you know, like they said before, you can practice against the zone, but you can't simulate what Jim Beheim has taught for so many years. And like he said, the last 10 or 15 years, really, that's been 100% of the defense. You can't simulate it, and, and Indiana failed to do so if they tried. But then you get to Marquette, a team that, while you can't simulate it, you could certainly act like you know about it, because you do. Yeah. And, and you talk about revenge, and you talk about getting off to a hot start. All those uh, things kind of bubbled into another quick game for SU to, to get out early in front and, and hold on in the end. Yeah, this was a big game for Syracuse. One thing that they're doing well is, you know, you hold a team to 20 points or less in the first half, there's a really good opportunity for you to get a victory. And when you see all the games they played, Montana was man-to-man, -man, California was man-to-man, -man, Indiana was man-to-man, -man. you get into a game against Marquette, that's the first team that you're going to see since that four out of five losses that they had at the end of the regular season where they can establish a zone themselves. And you would think with Syracuse playing the 2-3 zone, knowing the 2-3 zone, and having veterans like James Sutherland, Brandon Trish, C.J. Fair, that they would understand how to beat it because if you know it, you know its weaknesses. But they've had a lot of trouble against it. And with Marquette, I think that was probably the best win to show the maturity of this team from the regular season to the postseason because... When Marquette put the zone on, Syracuse hit three straight shots. Marquette went right out of the zone. So, when I mean, you score 55 points, you don't expect to hold someone to 39. But this was a game where Syracuse, really, they did enough on offense, but they, more so than in any other game, continue to prove the fact that defense is what is winning for them. They're going to have to do more against Michigan, but against Marquette, I mean, 74 points in the regular season to 39 points says a lot about Jim Beheim and what this team has been able to do to ad lib and get better. And, you know, Jeremy Grant had made the statement, other guys had made the statement, the defense was going to be ready. And it's, a, it's a, one thing to make a statement, it's another thing to put it on the floor. And from top to bottom, all eight players really got involved, and you see that victory. So that's Syracuse's road to here in Atlanta, Georgia for the Final Four. Uh, arguably the hottest team in the tournament. And if they're not the hottest, maybe it's Michigan. So we'll just have to wait and see how that plays out on Saturday night. For Dan Tortora, I'm John Garcia, Jr. for CuseNation.com.